we're inching closer and closer to the EA Sports College Football video game coming out, and I can't wait. I I've waited more than a decade for this game to return, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And as it inches closer and closer, EA Sports is going through a uh, rankings week this week and showcasing some of the the features of the game of like where um, the, the toughest places to play are today, for instance. And they've revealed their list of the top 10 most difficult places to play in college football in the video game. And when you look through the list, I don't know that there's any super glaring omissions. Um, uh, th they went deeper, by the way, than the, just the top 10. I think they went to the top 25. Um, but just for the sake of this video, we're going through the top 10. And who I think they got right and wrong. Now, one of the things that is important to me, because I'm finicky in this way, is like words matter. So if you're going to say toughest place to play, it, that to me is different than like best home field advantage, right? Because for instance, Northwestern is a really difficult place to play. Now the crowd and the atmosphere isn't difficult to contend with because hell, there's a good chance that your team might be the home team at Northwestern, but the elements make it a really difficult place to play. Illinois is a wind tunnel. Bowling Green is a wind tunnel. There are places where it is difficult to play there due to the elements, due to the construction of the stadium, what have you, rather than there are a lot of drunk people angry <laughs> at this stadium. And so I think it's important to point those two different things out. Like, I just think, like, best atmosphere is much different than most difficult place to play. Hostile atmosphere, best game day environment, or whatever the case may be. Because I, I, I saw, you know, like, I think Michigan is 13th on the list or whatever. And a Michigan, I saw a Michigan fan. They're like, we haven't lost at home in four years. Well, that doesn't make you a really difficult place to play. Like, your football team is good. And when your football team is not good, was not good, not all that long ago, it wasn't really a super hostile environment to go play in. While there are some programs where it is a difficult task to go play there, whenever it is you're asked to play there. So these are the top 10, according to EA Sports. So Kyle Field, Texas A&M is number one. And I think I immediately have an issue with that because I don't know that Kyle Field is the toughest place to play in the SEC. I, Tiger Stadium at LSU was number three on this list. Those people are nuts. <laughs> Those people are psychos. I think Tiger Stadium is probably the most difficult place to play one because they play a lot of night games where their fans who are already kind of teetering on the brink of needing to be in straight jackets and mental hospitals have had all day to get greased up and get food that only Louisianans eat in their gullets before going in to play a night game at Tiger Stadium. I think almost without a doubt, LSU is the number one place. That is difficult, most difficult, toughest place to play. Uh, my my boss is uh, a college football fan, and a couple of years ago, he did like a college football tour all fall, where he went to Alabama, he went to Michigan, Ohio State, LSU, Texas, uh, USC. I can't remember the others off the top of my head, but was absolutely. And obviously, this is different, right? Like I think the Ohio State game he went to was Arkansas State. The Michigan game he went to was Hawaii. So there are difference between like he went to. LSU Ole Miss and Ohio State, Arkansas State. But completely blown away by LSU. Said it was not even the same stratosphere as Alabama, as Michigan. Um, and so I, I think one, having Kyle Field, where, by the way, the, though Texas A&M fans are psychos in a completely different uh, avenue, um, they're in a cult. LSU fans are just sports fans, where Texas A&M fans are uh, members of a, a sinister organization that are, is actively doing harm to society. But that's a different discussion for a different day. I think Alabama at number two feels really weird because, like, for instance, I live near a high school that has won, I think, 13 now state championships in the last 25 years. And, like, they start to get expected, right? Like you just wake up, you get off the bus and you expect to win. And I think Alabama fans at 
this point in their fandom simply expect to win because they got numbers on the side of their helmets and the A on their on the collar. Like and, and that's fair. Like you have earned that. But they haven't had to be they haven't f- been disrespected. They haven't had somebody come in, beat the tar out of them or anything really like that in a really long time. And so I think Alabama fans like Ohio State fans, like Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Texas, whoever the case may be, kind of take it for granted at times that like we are good and we're going to be good. And so you don't really have to like Texas A&M fans are passionate because they want their team to succeed and have it. <laughs> and they're now they're pouring in hundreds of millions of dollars to make their team successful. It's still haven't got there yet. So there is a bit of hostility there where Alabama fan, like, and this is just me. I think it's important to admit your biases. This is just me flat out anti sec bias where like Alabama fans will show up. Like the students will show up to games dressed up like they're going to a wedding reception. And it, it pisses me off. Cause I don't know how like hostile, angry you can be wearing slacks and a polo. Right? Like I just, it's the idea of like, you're going to, give the middle finger to the opposing team's running back when he scores a touchdown while you're wearing a polo, like when you're wearing J crew just bothers me where like LSU fans have cut off jean shorts and a tank top on and a hat that they bought in 1988 that they used to like scoop out like alligator guts with the bill before. I, I just don't think it's apples to apples. So I would have tiger stadium and LSU at number one. I, I think that there are, by the way, of the, SEC schools, what are there? The four, five, six of the top 10 here. I don't want Tennessee. I have, I have a friend that played Division One college football um, in the Mid American Conference and they played at Tennessee at one point and said, like, it's not a question uh, that Tennessee is without a doubt the best environment he ever played in. Um, and had talked about, like, when I have kids, I'm going to take my kids to a Tennessee game just because it was that awesome. So to me, there are two kind of big glaring omissions in this list of top 10 places. One, I think is Autzen stadium, Oregon, always incredibly loud. And by the way, like you look at the, this list, right? Like the, the teams that are on here there, there's not, what else is there to do in college station? What else is there to do to Tuscaloosa, Baton Rouge, Athens, state college, Madison, Norman, Tallahassee, Gainesville. What else is there to do in those cities? You're not competing with the NFL, Major League Baseball. You're not competing with other sports. Those fans live, eat, and breathe these colleges, these universities. And Oregon fits right in that same kind of vein where it's super loud. The fans care deeply, passionately. And I think deserves probably a top ten spot on this list. I don't know who you take out. I, I don't. I don't know that Georgia is a top five. To tell you the truth, I, I haven't been to enough SEC stadiums to make that determination. But just from watching on TV and getting kind of the same sense from others, that I don't know that Georgia deserves a top five spot. I think Penn State deserves a top five spot in kind of the whiteout only. I've been to a game at Penn State. Um, and it was the first game actually after Joe Paterno had died first game in Bill O'Brien's um, tenure as the head coach at Penn State and walking to the stadium. Fans could not have been more friendly, could not have been nicer. Uh, I don't know how many bratwurst I ate from the parking lot to the stadium because Penn State fans like, hey, you need something to eat. Hell yeah, I'm going to eat. Let's do it. And then um, Penn State lost that game. And I felt like I was marrying or I was wearing an American flag jumpsuit in Iran when the game got over. It was like, we got to get the bleep out of (laughs) here. We got to go because those folks had turned hostile. All of the hospitality that was bestowed upon us as we walked to the stadium, it was the exact opposite. Like, you've got an Ohio license plate. Kill them. Like, okay, we got to get out of here. So Penn State at times can yes 100%, uh, especially the whiteout. It's a great environment. You get a false or you get a delay a game saying Mo Bamba, you deserve a top 10 spot. I don't know if Florida State maybe is the one, but like I think Oregon to me feels like a top 10 tough places play. And then Tennessee is the other one that I think feels like a, a tough place to play. 
because they're kind of in that same vein as LSU fans where it doesn't matter what time game day is. They will find enough time to get sauced up before the game starts. Like if you are famous for throwing a mustard bottle at Lane Kiffin <laughs> during a game, and, and it was great at the time because people were like, who the hell brings their own bottle of mustard to the game? Like, I don't know how to tell you this, but it was not mustard that was in that bottle, my friend. It was not mustard. That's the kind of fans you're dealing with. So I think Tennessee deserves a top 10 spot. But I th- I also think it's important to note, like if you are saying toughest place to play includes the elements, includes mother nature, weather, construction, animosity of fans, like does Florida absolutely deserve to be in the top? Yeah, because it's hot as balls. Like it's, it's humid as all get out. That helps Georgia. That helps LSU. That helps Florida State especially if it's a non-conference game against somewhere that's not used to the flat-out just swamp ass you are going to have in that stadium. And Tennessee's a bit milder of a climate. It's kind of nice, actually, during the fall, where uh, LSU, Georgia, Florida, Florida State, Alabama, it it, it can be a a little, little saucy down there. But I think, for the most part, I think EA Sports got it right. I just don't know that number one, I don't know that Texas A&M, to me, like, just because there's a lot of people there doesn't make it a difficult place to play. It's the same, like, and these are obviously huge stadiums that are on this top 10 list. Penn State is huge. Ohio State is huge. Michigan is the big house. They're not in the top 10. But just because there's a lot of people there doesn't, to me, make it the most difficult place to play. But I do look forward to like trying that out in the game and seeing if you can tell a difference between the 10th best, most difficult place to play and the number one most difficult place to play because we're inching towards college football video game being back and I'm here for it. That'll do it for today's episode of the Daily Huddle. Appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing so. If you are watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all the great college football content we're pumping out. If you are listening on the podcast feed, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in helping out the channel. See you tomorrow for another episode of The Daily Huddle.